What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be talking about the basics for torpedo builds in Star Trek Online. Torpedo builds. They've been the meta for DPS for a while now, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. I mean, it's possible, but I would be very surprised. Now, unlike energy weapon builds, which can be slapped together pretty easily, torpedo builds have much more specific requirements. This is why I wouldn't recommend them to new or inexperienced players. However, if you are looking to make a torpedo build for the first time, these are some of the things you're going to want to focus on. Torpedo builds don't really have the variety that energy weapon builds do. Energy weapon builds can revolve around beam overload or cannon scatter volley and whatnot, but any kind of torpedo build is only going to revolve around two abilities, Torpedo High Yield 3 and Concentrate Firepower 3, and you're going to need both of those abilities on the same build, which means a proper torpedo build will need at least a Lieutenant Commander Tactical Seat and Command Seat that are independent of each other. Using a lower version of either of these abilities will result in a noticeable loss of DPS. You're also going to want at least four weapon slots in the front, which means you can set up a proper torpedo build on a wide variety of cruisers, escorts, and even certain science ships, just as long as they have the right amount of tactical and command seating. And before someone brings it up, yes, I know most science builds already use mostly torpedoes, but there are still a lot of differences between an EPG build and a full kinetic build like what I'm talking about today. Since I've already started talking about bridge officer abilities, let's keep going with that. I've already said the ability Torpedo High Yield 3 is a must for torpedo builds, but I haven't really said what exactly that does. Activating this will cause the next torpedo you launch to be a high yield torpedo, which will deal much heavier damage to a single target. It's kind of like the torpedo version of Beam Overload, except instead of a sustained firing mode, it's actually just one heavy shot. Which, fun fact, that's actually how Beam Overload used to work too, but that's off topic. As I said, command seating is a must because you need room for Concentrate Firepower 3. What this ability does is not only buff your kinetic damage, which is the type of damage torpedoes do, but it also gives you extra hits of high yield 1 which does not interfere with the high yield 3 you're already using. So you're basically able to use two firing mode abilities without a shared cooldown. You can actually get a third firing mode in there by using the trait Entwined Tactical Matrices. This trait gives a free torpedo spread 1 anytime you use Fire at Will or Scatter Volley. So instead of using those abilities to buff your beams or cannons, you'll actually be using them to give your torpedoes another firing mode that doesn't trigger a shared cooldown. Now, I've already said command seating is a must for torpedo builds, but there are ships with more than one type of specialization seating on them. America Worker Seat can also be really helpful for a torpedo build because of mixed armament synergy. You're going to be using torpedoes, mines, and maybe even a beam or two for the sake of a set bonus, so you'll have plenty of things to trigger mixed armament. Intel has its advantages too, especially if you're like me and like using the trait Onboard Dilithium or Crystallizer for the sake of the bonus damage buff. Override Subsystem Safeties is an Intel ability, and is nice for buffing your power levels for the sake of that trait. For your captain specializations, I would recommend pretty much the same thing you're probably using for energy weapon builds too. So that's going to be Intel as your primary for the sake of space flanking, and for the secondary, I like Temporal because it gives access to Entropic Rider, which gives your weapon some extra physical damage over time, but Strategist or Constable would be good options as well. Now, for torpedo builds, some of the stats you're going to want to focus on are going to be pretty obvious. Buff to damage, or better yet, bonus damage are good on pretty much any build type, same with critical chance and critical severity. The specific damage type you want to be buffing is kinetic damage, because that's the type of damage torpedoes deal. You'll also want to put some focus into shield penetration, or things that drain shields or have increased damage against them. Torpedoes don't actually do a lot of damage against shields, so you're going to need to bring them down or bypass them as much as possible. You're also going to want to do something about the normal cooldown and shared cooldown of your torpedoes. While energy weapons can fire all at once at the same time, torpedoes can only fire one at a time in sequence. Firing one will trigger a short shared cooldown with the rest of your torpedoes. Lowering that shared cooldown means you will be able to fire your next torpedo that much faster. This also applies to mine launchers as well. Each torpedo and mine launcher will have its own individual cooldown as well, the length of which will depend on the type of torpedo or mine. Lowering the normal cooldown of your torpedoes will affect this individual cooldown. Though if it comes to a decision of having to pick between the two, I would prioritize lowering the shared cooldown. Like energy weapons, there are several different types of torpedoes. With energy weapon builds, you can pick whatever damage type you like and then just stick with that. But for torpedo builds, for a truly optimal build, you're going to want four specific torpedoes. As of recording this, those torpedoes are the Enhanced Biomolecular Photon Torpedo, the Delphic Distortion Torpedo, the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo, and the Neutronic Torpedo. All of these torpedoes have unique effects on them that make them extremely powerful. Make sure you're using them in that order as well. You want to prioritize to make sure that the most powerful torpedoes are firing first. Now, three of these torpedoes are all available in the Reputation System, so they're pretty easy to get. However, the Delphic Distortion Torpedo is from the Lobi Store and is therefore a bit more expensive. A nice free-to-play substitute would be the Quantum Phase Torpedo, available in the episode Sunrise. This torpedo is nice because of the extra shield damage it does. As I said earlier, breaking down shields is really important for a torpedo build. Now, obviously some ships have five forward weapon slots instead of four. If you're using one of these, I would not recommend using a fifth torpedo in that slot. 
Remember, torpedoes only fire one at a time, and they prioritize which one is slotted first and which one is the first one off cooldown. So odds are that fifth torpedo is never actually going to get the chance to fire because one of your earlier torpedoes is going to be off cooldown first. Your best option is to use an energy weapon that complements the set bonuses of one of the other torpedoes you're already using. The dual overcharged Delphic anti-proton beam bank, man that's a mouthful, makes for a good fifth weapon for its set bonus with the Delphic torpedo. But again, that's low by gear, so it's going to be kind of expensive. A nice budget option would be the wide angle dual heavy beam bank from the Discovery Reputation, which will add to the Dark Matter Quantum set bonus. That about covers it for the forward weapon slots, so let's talk about what you want to do in the aft. These days mines are what you want to put at the back for a torpedo build, mostly because there's no such thing as an omnidirectional torpedo. The way mine launchers work is they'll just lay out a number of mines behind your ship. The mines will then just kind of sit there until they're within 2 kilometers of a target. Once they're in range, they'll lock onto a target, chase it, and then explode. There is a personal trait that'll increase that range to 4, but honestly I don't find it that necessary, and this is because of the captain's ability, Relocate Mines. Using this will teleport your mines within 2 to 5 kilometers all around your target. Proper timing of this ability can result in some really impressive bursts in DPS. Like with torpedoes, there are some specific kind of mines you're going to want to stick to. Thoron infused quantum mines are always a good option. Quantum mines on their own deal a decent amount of damage, but the Thoron infused mines have their unstable Thoron radiation proc, which will deal some radiation damage over time. They're also easy to get because they come from the Delta Reputation's Dilithium store. Another good mine from the Reputation system is the Modulating Competition mine. This comes from the Competitive Reputation. This one's nice because it has a scaling damage buff that increases the longer it's been sitting out after it's been launched. Mines tend to do a lot of sitting, so you're almost guaranteed to get a good amount of that buff. There's a few other good options for mines depending on your build, but these are usually my go-tos. Now, I know not everyone is a fan of mines, so there are some other options you can put in the back. One of the better options is the Morphogenic set from the episode Home. The actual gear from this set really isn't going to do you any good, but the full 3-piece set bonus from the Morphogenic set is very powerful. If you still have an open weapon slot in the back after that, I'd recommend something that complements the set bonuses of one of your forward torpedoes. Now, the last thing to talk about before we wrap up is your power levels. While the damage for energy weapons is scaled based on how much power is in your weapon subsystem, torpedoes don't work like that at all. Weapon system needs to be online in order for your torpedoes to launch, but any additional power is redundant, because it won't have any actual influence on the damage your torpedoes and mines do. This means you're free to route that power to other subsystems. I typically max out my engine power for torpedo builds. More speed is always a good thing. This is especially good if you're using a ship with an experimental weapon slot, because that way you can use the Soliton Wave Impeller, and the Soliton Wave Impeller gets a haste buff with your engine power, which is why it's still one of, if not the best experimental weapon in the game. Having some power in your auxiliary subsystem isn't a bad idea either. This will determine the power of any exotic abilities you might have on your build, like chemosite lace weaponry or anything else you might have that does radiation damage or any other type of exotic damage. Some power in shields actually isn't a bad idea either, not because of how it affects your shield strength, but because it buffs the shield damage buff that the Discovery Reputation shield gives. How exactly you want to set up your power levels is going to be up to you and how you set up your build, but hopefully this is giving you an idea on your options. So yeah, those are the basics for torpedo builds. I hope it helps you in putting together your own. Like I said in the last video, this build basic series was supposed to be one big video, but I really underestimated the size of this project. If you haven't seen it already, my guide to energy weapon builds is already up, and the next video will be on the basics of EPG and control builds. You know, sciencey space magic stuff. Also in the last one, I said I might do a video on the basics of tank builds. Well, enough of you asked for it that I feel like I should do it, so that'll be happening after I do the science builds video. Anyway, that should wrap things up here. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, you know, all that YouTube stuff. I know it's tedious to hear, but it really does help the channel and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.